Alessandra Pomprion, sportscaster at our news partner, News for Jax, joins us now by phone from New York. Good morning, Alessandra. Good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us from afar. We appreciate it. Oh, of course. Yeah, I'm here uh, visiting, getting an early Christmas with my family in New York. So well, I'm excited to come back to Jacksonville, but not excited to talk about this loss. What a depressing game that was um, for Jacksonville yesterday. Well, so it what, kind of started from the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, I'm just curious about your take on Trevor Lawrence's return to the game so soon after an injury. I'm not surprised about that, to be honest. Um, it, he was limited in practice this whole week, but even in practice, it didn't seem like it hurt him that much. The one thing I know about Doug Peterson and the Jaguars, they're not going to put a player into harm's way. So if he was going to play and it was going to either hurt him even more or, um, you know, just it wasn't going to help the team. Uh, if he wasn't like fully 100%, they weren't going to play him. But they did. He's never missed a game due to injury in his entire playing career from high school, college, now in the NFL. So, I mean, it's a big thing. He wanted to play. Of course, you want to keep that streak going. Um, you know, and he said after that it didn't really hurt him that much. He didn't re-injure his ankle nor his knee. So, you know, that wasn't an issue. But like more of the issue. Yeah, just from the, the start of the game. What, what were you seeing when you say that, that you saw problems right at the beginning manifesting? Yeah, I mean, look at the opening drive, like Joe Flacco, who's not, you know, he's a little older for quarterback 38, I think, and he's only been on the Browns roster for a couple of weeks. For him to open the game with such a nice drive, moving the ball down the field, the defense could not stop them at all. And then capping it with the 30-yard, 30 34-yard touchdown pass to Njoku, um, when he was wide open, that's not a way that you want to start the game. But, you know, Unfortunately, the Jaguars opening jive, Lawrence was sacked, and then he went, you know, in his three and out, they punched it back to the Browns. So, you know, it, from the beginning, you could tell that this was a kind of a wonky game, and it may be a very long day for the Jaguars, and of course, that's what it turned out to be. And so when it comes to the Browns, they've got a great defense. Um, who who yeah. won the game for, for them? Was it the defense? Was it the Jags' offense losing? What, what do you think was the most consequential? You know, the Browns, they have the top-ranked defense. Um, so any, everyone knew going into this game, if you knew the NFL, you knew this was going to be a tough game because of that Browns defense. Their offense is, I mean, they looked great yesterday, but they're really not that amazing. Um, but I think the Jaguars' offense is the reason why um, they just had such a tough time. After the game, you know, Doug Peterson called it a disconnect. Trevor Lawrence called it just miscommunication. and you know, on every single drive, there was miscommunication. They just could not find a way to get going. But, you know, I think uh, Travis Etienne had a good game. There were some wildcat formations with him, and I think that was to alleviate Trevor Lawrence a little bit with his ankle injury. Evan Ingram had a great day, career high two touchdowns, um, and, you know, he had 11 receptions for 95 yards, so he was the bulk of the offense. So but, yeah, it was it was hard. I mean, when you have three intercept, when you throw three interceptions for Trevor Lawrence, it's you know you're statistically you're not going to win. Yeah, ugly. I will say that the shouting in my house uh, at the television all surrounded the, <laughs> the two point conversion attempt. What what was the deal there? Yeah, I you know they asked Doug Peterson after um, about that, and he said analytically it would have been good for us to get that, get an onside kick, get into field goal range, and then you win. Um, so he thought that that was a good decision to do that. You know, I think a lot of people were questioning that because even if you just were down by three, you could have done an onside kick, send into overtime. But I think because of how banged up the Jaguars are. You have a lot of players out right now or a lot of players playing through injuries that are not completely 100 percent. I think any extra minute playing in the game could be, you know, a, an issue because, um, you don't, you know, they played almost four hours. I mean, that was a, a very long game yesterday. So I think that may possibly he was trying to avoid overtime. Um, you know, but he thought it was a good idea and obviously it didn't work out for them, but mm -hmm. still a close game, you know. 31 27. Um, and they're the, still, the game, they, I mean, they benefited from some ba a bad weekend for some other folks in the AFC South. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, they're still um, surprisingly one game 
uh, lead in the AFC South because the Texans and Colts lost. Uh, in New York, the Jets were hosting uh, the Texans, so I kind of watched that game simultaneously. Um, but, yeah, so th- that's a good thing. I mean, they lost back-to-back games for the second time this season. You know, in week two and three, they also lost. But, you know, they're hosting the Ravens on Sunday Night Football. They're leading the AFC North. They're one of the best teams, if not the best team in the league. Um, it's going to be a tough task for them. They really need this win. Well, thanks, Alessandra Pumprion, sportscaster at our news partner, News for Jacks. Thanks so much for joining us by phone today. Oh, thank you. Everyone have a great day. You too.